Hey, what's up? This is Amy Dumas. You may know me as Lita. And you're listening to InYourHeadOnline.com. All right, we are back, and we are joined once again by Sunny Tammy Sitch. Welcome back to In Your Head. Hey, guys, what's going on tonight? You doing good yourself? I am doing awesome. Just studying for some final exams, but other than that, I'm great. Okay. Uh, what were you studying again? I remember you told us last time. I'm in school to be a physician's assistant. It's a step under being a doctor. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I'm going to UMDNJ, University of Medicine and Dentistry of New Jersey. And uh, I've got three more years, and then I'll be a physician's assistant. Basically, I'll be able to do everything a doctor does, uh, write prescriptions, suture, diagnose, cast, everything. But I won't have the MD behind my name. That's the only difference. Mm -hmm. So it'd be cool. That's a lot of hard work. So I'm yeah. studying for pathophysiology final exam tonight. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, pathophysiology is a study of diseases. It's real exciting. <laughs> Well, I was gonna, I was gonna say uh, the writing the prescription might come in handy and write. No, 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 absolutely not. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, I'm not. Yeah. Gonna, I'm not gonna do anything illegal for anybody in this business to get myself in trouble. Are you not? Oh, oh, I was just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, actually, here in Cape Cod, uh, there was a doctor who was just arrested for that. Doctor Brown, not for wrestlers, but just for people. But uh, we'll get off. Uh, we'll get off the. Um, Doctor talk here. Let everybody know uh, you got a big show coming up uh, for Pro Wrestling Unplugged this weekend, Saturday. Yep, exactly. You, know, you can check out ProWrestlingUnplugged.com. They the Crazy 8 match. Um, we got a lot of matches. It's going to be at the new Alhambra Arena, formerly ECW Arena. And uh, before the matches, they're going to have a tailgate party, which uh, you're going to be part of. Yeah, that should be really cool. We're going to go out there, I guess, out in the back of the arena, and we're going to tailgate for a couple of hours before the show. It should be a lot of fun. I'm like, lately I'm like the tailgating queen between my Mets games and concerts. It's insane. So, we'll go have a good time. Maybe get a little tan. Yeah. Do you, do you have any uh, special recipes for any kind of uh, tailgate uh, food? Oh, God. I, I am like the crazy chef when it comes to the tailgating parties. I usually skewer some shrimp, you know, marinate in some like garlic and lime. And then I've got, you know, pork skewers and I've got my um, cheddar bacon jalapeno burgers. I mean, you name it, I do it up. It's, it's a pretty good deal. You know, every time we go to, you know, the Garda Fair Center, I'm now at the PNC Bank Art Center for concerts, you know, a ton of people come and I'm usually the chef and, uh, you know, nobody goes home hungry. That's all I've got to say. So we'll see. It should be good on Saturday as long as we have good weather. Mm -hmm. uh, do, you, do you refer to it as the new Alhambra Arena, or do you still call it the... Uh, you know what? I didn't even know what the name of it was. It's, to me, it's still the ECW Arena. I think it'll always be the ECW Arena, you know, as far as anybody's concerned, because, you know, that's basically what made it famous, and nobody would know about the bingo hall if it wasn't for <laughs> ECW. Right. So, uh, just like, you know, we still call the Meadowlands the Meadowlands. We don't call it Continental Airlines Arena, and you still say the Garden State Arts Center instead of the PNC Bank Arts Center, you know. I think it'll always be the ECW Arena. It mm -hmm. should be. Does, does it still have a special atmosphere to it? Well, you know, I haven't been there in probably about oh, maybe a year and a half. Yeah, you know what? Last time I worked there, um, it was right before I met my boyfriend, and that's almost a year and a half. So it's been a while, but it's, yeah, it still has that aura, that feel. Um, you still have the crazy same bunch of fans coming in to watch, you know, whatever show was there. And I can't even remember who I was there for last time. I think Jersey All Pro. I don't remember. But um, you still have that feeling. You still go in there, you know, knowing all the history that went on in there and all the crazy things. And, I mean, that was actually the arena that I went through my first table. So that was, <laughs> you know, a little memorable. Right. But, you know, it'll be, it'll be cool going back on Saturday. Uh, have you ever seen a Crazy 8 match before? No. What is it? Um, well, it's pretty hard to explain. But <laughs> for everybody out there, they could check out ProWrestlingOnPlugged.com. And they have, uh, they have, like, highlight videos of it. Basically, it's like, um, they have, like, ropes hanging from the mm -hmm. ceiling, and people can swing across them. They're kind of like Tarzan. What? Amazing. Sounds like uh, American Gladiators. Remember that show? <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> they had an event like that. I was kind of thinking Is there like a that. cage hanging from the ceiling? What else are they doing? Um, well, besides the Crazy 8 match. Yeah, no, I mean, what, what else is in a Crazy 8 match? Just ropes hanging from a ceiling? Yeah, I mean, something else has to be uh, there. <laughs> I'm not selling very well, but if you check out the... Uh, it's not, it looks a lot cooler than, than what I'm saying. Uh, but, it, I mean, it's got two cold Scorpio on it, so he'll probably be doing some crazy uh, moves. Who else is in the match? Uh, Devin Moore and Detox. Don't know who they are. No clue. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm like the last person in the world you should ask uh, about, you know, certain people on the indie scene because I am so, I don't know, I'm so out of that right now. Yeah. I have no idea who so. You know they Scorpio, ask me about, right? you know. Oh, of course I know Scorp. Oh, yeah. I have known him forever. <laughs> but as far as like indie guys go, I am clueless, totally clueless. Uh, are you, do you watch the matches when you're when you're at an indie show? You know, usually I do. Um, 
you know, if I'm on early, you know, I'll work and I'll get out of there. But if I'm on later, later in the card, absolutely. I usually sit there and watch each one. I, I like to help some guys out, you know, some young guys and girls who go in there. And, you know, I like to maybe take them aside afterwards and tell them what I liked, what I didn't like, what I think they should improve on, you know, what they shouldn't, you know, what was good, what was bad. Um, a lot of people, I, and I've already gotten, you know, some bad reactions from people, almost to the point where they don't say it out loud, but you can read in their eyes, they're like, why are you telling me this kind of thing? And it's like, you know what, I've been in this business for 17 years now, mm -hmm. you should shut up and listen to me, because I've been there, done that, seen it all, learned from the best, and if anybody's going to give you an honest opinion and tell you what looks like crap and <laughs> what looks good, it's me. You know, I, I don't hold back, I'll, you know, I'll tell you right now, if you, know, you should quit the business, never do it again, or yeah, maybe you'll have a shot. And, you know, I know I know what I'm talking about, and I know what, you know, what to look for in a match. And, you know, take my advice. Like I said, I've been there, done that. You know, Christ, I lived with Chris for how many years? You know, 15 years. And, I, you know, I know everything that was ever in his mind, I know. So, you know, I'm pretty knowledgeable when it comes to, you know, what to do in the ring and what's right psych psychological, you know, psychology-wise. So, you know, take my advice. Usually it's good. Are you ever surprised that, uh, that people don't ask for your advice or don't take your advice? No, you know what? More or less, people do. I mean, people, every time I'm on a show, I mean, even if it's some young guy I've never met before, some indie worker, um, you know, just in saying goodbye, they'll always say, hey, did you ha happen to watch my match? And I'll, I'll either be honest and say, no, I'm sorry, I, I didn't even pay attention to it. Or, yeah, I did catch this, and this spot was good, or this was good. But um, more, I would say 80% of the time, people do ask my opinion. Which is cool, I mean, because at least, you know, I'm not, I mean, and I know this, and most people in the business know this, I'm not just another chick that came along and got a job cause, out of luck. I actually do know what I'm doing, and I do know, you know, what is good and what's bad. And, um, you know, people do usually ask my advice, and a lot of times before a match, somebody will say, hey, do you mind watching my match and let me know how it is? So it's really, it's really cool that I get that respect from, you know, from some people in, in the business. Mm -hmm. Uh, just quick, back to the uh, crazy ad. I found some more stuff about it. You got the uh, the titles will be hung from the ring, uh -huh. uh, from the ceiling. You got mm -hmm. uh, six rope swings, which I mentioned earlier. It is mm -hmm. two twenty-five foot high cage scaffolds oh, and Jesus. two steel cages. Two steel cages. That's right. Now, I wish I got a caller here. Who is? This? Uh, it's Jason. You got a question for Sonny? What's up, Jason? Uh, hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Oh, I can't complain. That's not actually my question. Uh. <laughs> no, that's it. One question, that's all you're allowed. <laughs> Goodbye. Uh, I normally kind of ask decent questions. Like last time we were on, I asked about Smoky Mountain, but I couldn't think of anything good. So uh, <laughs> I just want to know, what do you miss about ECW? What do I miss about ECW? Do um, you miss ECW? Uh, yes and no. I mean, uh, in the end, I kind of got screwed out of a lot of money. Um, but what I do miss is I had a lot of creative control. Um, it was really, really nice because, you know, Paul and I had a relationship where he would, he would basically, let, you know, give me a sheet of paper and let me get finishes to the whole locker room. He would let me time out the pay-per-views. I, mean, I, I mean, I would help out in the production studio putting together the TV shows. I had a lot of, a lot of creative input, which I really didn't have before. I, well, I had it to an extent, you know, for Vince. I had a little bit of input as far as my stuff is concerned, but here in ECW, Paul gave me, you know, the chance to have input on the whole show, not just my stuff or Chris's stuff. So I do miss that because I do love the creative part and I do love the production part. I'm, I always had kind of had a little knack for that. Um, so I do miss that. But um, if I had to do it all over again, no, I would, probably wouldn't come back there. <laughs> Not under Paul's reign anyway. Well, was uh, Todd Gordon there at all when, uh, when you were there? Uh, he was in and out. He was there more before I got there, and he would just show up at a show here or there you know, while I was there. But um, no, I really didn't have much interaction with him at all. Mm -hmm. uh, have you worked with him uh, after the, after ECW? Uh, just uh, at the, uh, yeah, you know what I think. I think there was like one or two indie shows over the past like seven years or so, but nothing nothing that uh, that was worthwhile for me to remember. Mm -hmm. I guess. But I uh, know he, he was always cool to me. Mm -hmm. uh, did you have anything else, Jason? Uh, I just thought of another one. It's a non wrestling question, but I know that Tammy's a huge Kiss fan. Do you ever watch yeah. the reality show? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's pretty funny. I mean, I, I've met him before, and I kind of know how you know he is off camera, and <laughs> it's it's funny because he's exactly the same. I mean, the Gene Simmons you see on TV is Gene. Mm -hmm. You know, he's in character 100 percent of the time, 24 seven. So uh, you know, it's kind of funny. But yeah, I'm, I'm a diehard Kiss fan. I always have been. Actually, that's what I listened to for an hour while I ran on the treadmill today. Was Kiss. <laughs> okay. Awesome. But, but I, a... I think once a Kiss fan, always a Kiss fan. <laughs> he didn't try to sell you a Kiss coffin or anything, did he? 
<laughs> no, but he tried to get me to go to an after party at the hotel with him. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is after a concert in Philadelphia, so I was like, oh, I don't think so. <laughs> Did you have anything else for Jason? Uh, no, and thank you very much again, Tammy. No, anytime, Jason. Have a cool night. Hey, are you going to the show on Saturday? Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to make it. I have to my girlfriend because I'm skipping our, our anniversary tonight uh -oh. to uh -huh. the show. Well, you know, try to, and if you do, come and say hi and tell me you know, you're the one I was talking to. That's all. Mm -hmm. uh, Jason okay, has I'll, done I'll some uh, ring announcing before. Have you ever announced uh, a card that Sonny was on? Not yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, hey, bring your girlfriend and come on. Make it a family affair. But she does go to shows every now and then, but she's picky about when she goes. So. Oh, okay. Then leave her the hell home. Screw her. <laughs> <laughs> if she's picky, I don't know if she wants to be at the ECW ring. <laughs> well, thanks for calling, man. Uh, yep, thank you. Uh, did you have a question from the board, Incher? Uh, Extreme Falls, he actually has a question. He wants to know, have you seen the new ECW, and what do you think of it? <clears throat> um, when they first started with the whole new ECW thing, I did watch the first couple of shows because I was very interested to see what was going on. But to be honest with you, I haven't watched it since. Um, I really haven't watched any show since. Um, I'm very busy, you know, like I said, with school and everything like that, and, you know, I really don't even have the chance to, but... Um, would it, I mean, I was very excited when it was coming back. I was like, this is awesome. We're going to see some awesome ECW cards again. But to, to me, it's just another show under, you know, the WWE banner. It's, um, it's all the same. It's, to me, it's not, it's not a hardcore ECW show anymore. It's mm -hmm. basically an EC, ECW show infiltrated with all these WWF guys, sorry, WWE guys. And it's the same show all around. Raw, SmackDown, and ECW look all the same to me. No. So, you know, it's, it, it, would, it doesn't interest me to watch. If it stayed, if it stayed like the old ECW used to be, I probably would tune in and watch it. Mm -hmm. But you know, because it's not, then I don't. Mm -hmm. Extreme would also like to know if uh, WWE ever approached you about being in one, any of the one night stands. The first one, the uh, second one. Uh, the the first, well, the first one. What, when was the first one? That was June of '05, right? Yeah, but yeah. so yeah. Right. Um, I had talked to Tommy a couple of months before that about possibly doing something, and then when Chris died, you know, it was just it was not the right thing to do. You know, it was Chris's death was already being exploited by so many companies. I kind of kind of like I didn't want to go in there and have that done too. You know, I, I so many companies you know gave me so much work right after Chris died, but I'd get there and basically they get me in the ring and try to make me cry and make everybody feel bad for me and you know they were kind of just exploiting the whole thing so mm -hmm. it kind of it kind of fell through thank God you know because I wouldn't have wanted to go on that show and do that again so mm -hmm. you know uh, do you think that's what uh, Paul Heyman tried well not with, not about um, about Candido but when you're in ECW do you think that was uh, what he was trying to do that time you did the uh, promo on uh, ECW TV and you were... Oh, that was so friggin' stupid. He wrote that whole goddamn thing. He wrote a script for me and he tried, He wanted me to make it sound like it was coming like all from my heart and my head. Mm -hmm. You know, unfortunately, he did know some personal things about my life, like my dad dying, my niece dying, things like that, and he wrote all this in. And when we were done, I'm like, Paul, I said, this better work the way you say it's going to work, because if it doesn't, you know, this is, I, I'm going to be really pissed off. And of course, it didn't work the way he wanted it to work, and I was really pissed off, because... You know, I, I kind of trusted him. See, I, I have to learn. Never trust Paul Heyman. That's the, the next mistake, one, number one. You cannot trust that man. And, you know, me being stupid and other people in my ear, you know, saying, oh, trust him, it's a great idea, da 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 da, da. You know, we tried it, it didn't work, and, you know, see a lot of me. But, uh, you know, he, 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 likes to, he likes to pry into people's lives and, you know, try to exploit it. And, you know, I, I think that's wrong. I said, you know, it's an, it's an entertainment business. It's not real life, and that's how it should be kept. Mm -hmm. It really should be. I have learned. I've learned by trial and error. Keep my personal life personal. Um, we got a LTNA fan here from Portugal. Hello there. Hello. How are you? How are you doing? I'm Hello. good. How are you doing? Doing fine as well. Um, I called because a uh, quick question. You were talking about uh, the new ECW and um, as well. You're, I think you were talking about Vince McMahon. Uh, I don't know if you watched uh, the last Raw uh, with nope. uh, Vince McMahon exploding. Uh, <laughs> no, Vince didn't McMahon see it. The, the, only, yeah, but... the only thing I heard about it, I heard about it the next morning on um, the Opie and Anthony radio show. It's just a regular talk radio show in the morning. Mm -hmm. I was on my way to school and I heard something about it, but I have no idea what happened. Yeah, but still, um, my question isn't necessarily about it, but more so about storylines, this kind of storylines. What is your opinion about this uh, Almost uh, nonsensical storylines. Uh, 
you dislike the, this type of concept of songlines, or what is your opinion? I'm sorry, I couldn't understand. I like the um, concept of what? Of uh, uh, a silly storyline or a storyline yeah. around someone uh, dying on the TV show, I guess. Um. Well, I'm, I'm not going to criticize what they're doing because obviously what they do works. They're you know multi-billion-dollar right. company, but um, I think it can get a little hokey after a while. I really do. I mean, I, I mean, like a, like what I heard was on the radio that Vince so you know blew up in the limo or something like that. Everybody right. thinks he's dead. Come on, you know he's not dead. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it would have been all over the new pa- newspapers and CNN right. and everything like that if he was dead. So, someone called the FBI. Oh God! But you know, it's like it, it gets a little it gets a little much after a while. So I think I think there's a, there's a limit to what should be done as far as that kind of stuff. And I think think that might have been a little too much. You know, enough. Did you have anything else, Sarah LTNA fan? Just one more question. Uh, from all the CDs that you wrestle, which was the CD that you prefer? Philadelphia? Any kind of other CD? What city? Uh, geez. M- most Rowdy fans, for instance, uh, most respond. Um, uh, well, as far as fans are concerned, honestly, I love being in England. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for some reason, the fans in London and Manchester and Birmingham, three three towns that I worked in um, England, they went freaking nuts for me. Um, also, Canada, a lot of Canadian towns were like big Sunny fans. For some reason, I was I was six times as big up there as I was here, which was crazy. You know, you can imagine what it was like going up there when you heard the crowds here. You know, but um, uh, if I had to pick something in this country, oh Jesus. Um, Oh God, I don't know. I mean, to me, it's all the same. You know, every city's the same. Every arena's the same. Every, you know, every twenty thousand group of fans is the same. <laughs> you know, work is work. Mm-hmm. Well, as somebody who was born and raised in Birmingham, England, I really oh, were you? I, I was indeed. Oh, very cool. <laughs> I love the accent. Seriously, that's one of my. That's why I always, you know, got along with Davy Boy so well because I love his accent. <laughs> He claims to anyway. I still, I still, uh, I still think he was born in Cleveland. But I thought he was from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. But no. <laughs> thanks for calling in, LTNA fan. Okay. Bye. Bye. Wow. Uh, did you have a question, Barbie, from the board? Uh, not exactly from the board, but the last time we had you on the show, it was to promote a fan fest that went down in, I think it was New Jersey. How did that go? Where? Uh, uh, there was Jersey. a fan fest in New Jersey, as far as I know. It was the last time you were on the show. That's what you were plugging. How long ago was this? Mm, uh, a few like, weeks ago. A couple of months, maybe? Yeah. A couple of months. Oh, yeah, that was the Carteret um, convention, right? Yeah, I believe Could so. Yeah, that was really good. That was really good. They have another one there August 25th. Mm-hmm. And even better people are going to be there. We've got Bret Hart, Vader. Um, oh, geez, I just lost my train of thought. Who else is going to be there? Beverly Brothers, which, you know, you could take or leave. Um <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I can't remember. He gave me the list of people, but I forget. But Bret Hart and Vader, those are the two. Oh, Goldust. Goldust is going to be there, Oh, Goldust, that's cool. Yeah, so it should be really cool. It should be It should be even better than the last one. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't I don't remember the last time Bret's been about, around here, you know. Yeah. But uh, it should be good. That's August 25th, same place, the Radisson in Carteret, New Jersey. All right, cool. Um, also, uh, at the Pro Wrestling uh, Unplugged show this weekend, uh-huh. Robin himself is going to be there, Burt Ward. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Why? <laughs> uh, he's gonna be in. Uh, he's gonna be in uh, one of the wrestlers' corners. Who? Uh, Johnny Cashmere. Oh, Jesus! Kidding me? No. Well, the story is from Todd Gordon, who we had on the show last week, that Johnny Cashmere has gone insane and believes himself to be Batman. Oh my God! <laughs> so he's gone out to get the Boy Wonder. Very interesting. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, along oh, those yeah, lines, yeah. what what wrestler do you think would made the best uh, Batman villain? What'd you say? Uh, what wrestler do you think would have made the best Batman villain? Oh, my God. I don't know. <laughs> like, if you were to pick somebody in the Batman movie? Yeah. Oh, my God. Um, well, I guess you could pick a gimmick that you think would, would make a good uh, Batman villain. Yeah, Mantar. 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 With the helmet. Mantar. Mantar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Do you guys remember Mantar the oh, whole yeah. two weeks he was there? <laughs> oh, my God. No, um, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I think Sonny. <laughs> oh, definitely. Yeah, he, me, me and Catwoman could have, uh, you know, done some Mantar, dirty work. He had the big, uh, he had the moose, big moose head, yeah. kind of like uh, Moose Sholak back in the day. He wasn't a moose. You, you don't, you have no he idea about bull. Mantar. A bull. No, it, yeah, because it, it was like a bull head. Because remember the Greek um, Minotaur, right? The, you know, half mm-hmm. man, half bull. 
Moose. Oh my god. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, Moose show like had the moose head, and it was oh very. Oh my simple. god. <laughs> Next, you're going to say he was a gazelle or something like that. Well, that, that might have worked better. He could have, he could have Dan, Dan that could have been his, he, uh, his valet. He could have had a female gazelle with him. Oh when he God. took the helmet off, he had the horns painted on the side of his head. What's that? Manti. When he took the uh, the bull head off, he had horns painted across the side of his head. Did he? I don't remember that, but maybe I, I didn't pay too much attention to Manti and notice. <laughs> he captivated me. What, what a great gimmick that was, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. But, those were the like days with did. the great gimmicks of Mantar and Man Mountain Rock and all that stupid crap. Did, did, they, ever <laughs> to like, did they ever ask you to uh, do any crazy gimmick? No. Why? No. Why would uh, you? I, just, I don't know. You never know. They asked someone to be Mantar. So. No. The whole sunny gimmick was getting over. Why change it? Right. You Why? Know? You know, I meant maybe before that or somewhere else. No. No, no. I'd probably say no anyway. Mm. I hate that stupid <laughs> stuff. A lot of people here in the chat room are asking, uh, who do you think the better in-ring performer is, Bret Hart or Shawn Michaels? Better in-ring. Um, Shawn. You think so? And that's not because I used to sleep with him. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I, just, I just really do. I, I think he's all around better. Mm-hmm. I just uh, always have. I think they, were, they, were at, they just said performer. I added the in-ring part. See, I, I, and because the way I look at it, if you, if you look at their matches, if you pick them apart, Shawn could basically go in there and do anything. He can be a heel. He can be the baby face, and he can do any spot or move ever created. And if you watch, a, if you watch an old Bret Hart match, it's the same match over and over. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's just like just like a Hulk Hogan match back from like the late '80s. It's the same thing over and over. Ends with a leg drop. You know, Bret was Bret's match was the same match over and over. Ends with the sharpshooter. I mean, you know, he's he was you know he was great at what he did, but what he did was very little. Um, Sean, on the other hand, can do anything. Mm-hmm. So I would definitely say Sean. His uh, interviews, yeah. his interviews were so much better too, because Brett couldn't speak. You know that. Yeah. Now he wasn't the best interview. Uh, do you have a question from the board, Intro? Uh, Glogo, he actually has a question. Uh, would you still like to be a manager for uh, Ric Flair? Oh, absolutely. I mean, life wouldn't be complete unless you managed Ric Flair once or twice. But uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if if the you know chance ever came up to do it, I would jump. I would jump for it. That would be like the ultimate thing. I think that would round out, you know, everything I've ever done. I've always said that's the one thing I always want to do is manage with Flair just once. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, I think that would be really cool. That would be awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, I told you earlier we're going to have uh, Rikishi on in the second half of the show. Uh-huh. And I was planning on asking him if um, if any fans ever actually requested a stink face. No, oh I was just God. wondering if uh, anyone ever requested that from you. And How if much anyone that what? cost injure? Uh yeah. If Why are you bringing me into what? your sick joke if, here? Wait, if anybody ever requested Rikishi doing a thing No, no, me? Just, re- just requested one from you, that move from you, anything. No, oh. no, I mean, well, if they have, I tuned them out of my head real quick. You know? <laughs> right. But, uh, no, I've been, some, I've been asked some crazy things in my, in my life, but, uh, no, nobody's ever asked that. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, people, people have asked, yeah, will you sit on my face, but not <laughs> right. quite in a stink face right. mode, you know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, that's another story. Right. That's, that story will be saved for the book. <laughs> uh, are you going to come out with a book? Actually, yeah, I just started writing one. You're going to write it yourself? Yeah, I'm going to write it myself, so I'll shop it around. And I'm actually going to contact Vince as well to see if they want to publish it, because I think it'll be it'll be a lot better and do a lot better if it's got the WWE label on Definitely. it, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, with you know everything I did there, I don't see why he wouldn't go for it with all the mm-hmm. you know with all the books they're doing. So. Mm-hmm. You know, we'll see what happens. But, yeah, I just started writing a couple months ago, and um, it's, it's going to be good. It's mm-hmm. going to be very interesting. It's not, to put it this way, it's not going to be a Missy Hyatt book. Right. It's not going to be, oh, well, you know, I screwed 18,000 people <laughs> and did it, da 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 No, absolutely not. I mean, I've got his hilarious road stories and, you know, stories of ribs, like Owen Hart ribs and J.D. Boy ribs. and I mean, you name it. I've got so much cool, interesting stuff that people would love to hear. So. Mm-hmm. You want to give us an example of a rib story here? Um, that I witnessed or that I was just involved in? Uh, either one. That you know we might hear in the book. Um, okay. That uh, well, here's one I was involved in. It was hysterical. It was so much fun. Uh, we were in Cleveland, Ohio, the Gund Arena. It was a brand new arena, and we were the event there, right when the arena opened. It was gorgeous. I mean, the locker rooms were carpeted, the walls and floors were carpeted. It was beautiful. And it was towards towards the end of the night, and but the show wasn't quite over yet. And um, 
there was a big, huge, like, sheet cake brought to the back by a fan. A fan made it for Bret Hart, and it had Bret's face airbrushed on it. It was beautiful. It was absolutely gorgeous. I mean, it looked like a, it looked like a painting. It was so nice. But, of course, you know, you're not going to eat it. I mean, because a fan made it. You don't know what's in it. Razor blades, you know, right. arsenic. Who knows? So, you know, Davey, Davey and I were always, Davey Boy and I were always really, really close friends. And he was standing over by the cake, and he was like, Tammy, come here. I want you to smell the nose. It smells like strawberry. <laughs> so I go over. I'm like, Davey, do you actually think I'm going to put my nose by a cake that you're standing right next to? I'm not an idiot. He's like, well, I'm not going to do anything. Just smell it. Smell the nose. I'm like, I don't think so. And he's wearing his glasses. So I stuck my hand in the cake, scooped up a big handful, and pie-faced him. <laughs> he was like, all right. He's like, shit's on now. That's it. So he grabbed the whole cake and started chasing me down the hallway. We're running, running, running down the hallway, running. All of a sudden, I get, it's like a dead end about 20 feet ahead of me. There's nowhere for me to go. And before I could even turn around... Boom, I get slammed in the back of the head with the cake. And the show is still going on, mind you. Um, I turn around, and I'm, like, breathing heavy. I just ran, like, 500 yards down the hallway. So I pick the cake up off the floor, and I start chasing Davy Boy. <laughs> Davey, so, Dave, we're running the opposite direction. Everybody in the locker room is looking at us like we're out of our minds. And the cake's flying everywhere. So I chase Davy down the hall, and I throw the cake at Davy. Boom, hits him in the back of the head. So as he's picking up the cake off the floor, this entire sheet cake, like the bottom, bottom is still on the cake, like the cardboard it was on, you know, we're taking a breather, we're looking at each other, we're covered in cake, we're laughing, we're like, oh, my God, that was hysterical, it was so much fun. And right there, you know, right next to us is the locker room door, and there's Owen Hart standing right outside the door against the wall. And Davey looks at me and he goes, don't worry, Tammy, I wasn't going to get you again, I'm going to get Owen. Boom, slammed the whole cake in Owen's face. And Owen was only standing against the wall, so the bag of his head smashed right against the wall. So as the cake slides down off of Owen's face into his arms, he, he just looks at Davey, licks his lips, he goes, okay, Davey, makes a left turn, turns into the locker room, walks up to Davey's gear bag, and boom, dumps the whole cake in Davey's gear bag. Okay? <laughs> so here's the whole crew in the locker room pissing themselves, laughing as loud as they can, because, I mean, uh, Owen Hart just dumped an entire sheet cake in Davey Boy's gear bag, and Davey still had to work. That's the, like, the kicker. He still had to work. His stuff is covered in cake, and everybody's laughing, and I'm looking in the door, and I'm cracking up. Davey looks up at me, he goes, oh, you think that's funny? Starts chasing you with the cake again. Chasing me, chasing me, chasing me, boom, hits me with the cake in the back of the head again. I turn around, I start chasing Davey with the cake, he runs into my locker room, which was a dead end. And he runs into my locker room, he turns around at the mirror, there's nowhere for him to go, and Chris was in there sitting in a chair in my locker room. So I chase Davey in, we look at each other, we both had cakes in our hand, cake in our hand, we look at Chris, boom, we hit Chris right in the face and it splatters all over the carpeted wall behind Chris. <laughs> right at that moment, Tony Gurria walks in. What the hell is going on? What the hell? Oh my God, would you do this in your homes? And we're like, probably, <laughs> you know. Well, long story short, uh, Davey and I were both fined $500 and made to stay two hours after the show with wet towels to clean the carpet on the walls and the floors of the bus under <laughs> <laughs> It was, I mean, it was $1,000 well spent, let me tell you that. After being on the road for three weeks straight, like going crazy, that was like our release. Davey and I just had such a good time with it. We were covered in cake. Davey still had to go work. His gear bag was full of cake. Owen was covered. It was, it was just phenomenal. I mean, it was so funny. I mean, and then here's another Davey story. There's a time we were in Canada. Um, we were on, like, a two-week tour in Canada, and we all, we all rented, like, this big 12-person, like, van, 12-passenger van. It was me, Chris, Davey Boy, uh, Dustin, uh, Bart Gunn, Billy Gunn. Uh, Marty Janetti, a bunch of people. I can't even remember everybody was in the, in the van, but it was full. I was the only girl, of course. And yeah, I don't know if you know this, but in Canada, fireworks are illegal, and you can buy them at the you know, convenience stores on the side of the road. Mm -hmm. So to make a long story short, we bought fireworks. And uh, on the QEW, the Queen Elizabeth Way, like the major highway going from Toronto to like these other towns we had to go to, we're shooting fireworks out the windows at Owen Hart driving a Mark's van behind us. <laughs> so here's uh, here's Owen driving this Mark's van that you know always, always used to pick up Owen and drive him around Canada, and Owen is driving right behind us in this van, and we're shooting Roman candles at the grill of this van, and the Roman candles are shooting into the van, and like the whole van is filling up with smoke. And there's but you got to think we're on a major highway by Toronto, but here's all these thousands of other cars on the road swerving all over the place because all they see is fireballs coming out of a van. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it was hysterical. By the time the two weeks were over. This van that we were rented, um, that was a brand new van when we rented it, looked like 
a bomb exploded in the van. I mean, the carpets were burned. There was a smell of, like, a real bad stench of smoke in the van and, like, fire, that firework smell. Um, from lighting off smoke bombs for two and a half weeks, for two weeks, like, green and red smoke bombs. Everything was stained green and red. Uh, from the guys wrestling in the van the whole trip, the middle bench got broken out of the floor, so they threw it out of the side door, so it was missing the middle <laughs> bench. The passenger side window was like one of those old crank windows. It went down, and it wouldn't go back up. It was broken. And now this is in the middle of winter, so it's like snowing a blizzard, and we don't have a window that goes up. We're missing a, a bench, so half of us had to sit on the floor, and the whole thing is burned and smells of fireworks. We go and return the van at the end of the tour, and Davey decides to return it. Davey Boy was so convincing at everything he did. I guess it was his accent. People didn't want to argue with him. He goes to the rental counter, and he says, you know, ma'am, I can't believe you would rent me this van. I had my family, my children up here for a vacation. You rented me a van that has no, has no bench in the middle. It's uh, the window's broken. It won't go up. It, it, smells like, it smells like fire, and there's burns in the carpet. I can't believe you'd rent me this kind of a van for me, my children, and my wife. Well, the rental company was so convincing. The rental company... Uh, credited him the entire rental back on his credit card and gave him a free week the next time he was in the area Baker is Davey didn't even rent the car to begin with <laughs> but he was so convincing they put it back on his credit card and gave him a free rental <laughs> it was it was classic that's one of the trips I will never forget it was so much fun would you say those are some of the, like, the funnest guys to travel with would be um, Owen and uh, Davey oh absolutely if you were with them you did not have a boring time on the road Mm-hmm. And luckily, for most the entire time I was there, we, uh, you know, I was with Davey most of the time. But when I first got there, Chris and I would travel with Davey and Lex for about a year, and then, you know, uh, you know, throughout the rest of the time I was there, you know, I would be with Davey maybe maybe one or two days out of every week. So I was always around them, and uh, you know, they didn't they didn't they didn't want the road to be boring, and it, believe me, it was not boring. We had such a good time with them. <laughs> we had so much fun. We really did. Oh, uh, we got another caller here. Who is this? Uh, caller? Hello. Hello? Who's the worst? Uh, you on, you're on there with Sonny. You got a question? Yeah. Who hey, what's worst, up? Never, who, who was the worst you ever traveled with? The worst I ever traveled with? Mm-hmm. Barry Horowitz. <laughs> 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 Only because he's the cheapest son of a bitch you'll ever meet. <laughs> <laughs> there, was, there was a time, I mean, he was the kind of guy that always wanted to stay at the $19 a night hotel, but with four other guys in the room. Right. You know what I mean? So there was a time, we were up in Vancouver, and it was me, Owen, Chris, Barry, Tom Pritchard, Hakushi, and Luis Bacoli. And I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. And we're in Vancouver, and we wanted to go to this great Japanese restaurant after the match. It was like a hibachi steakhouse kind of restaurant, but they had sushi too. It was awesome up there. So we go, and we're talking about going, and Barry had a really bad night at work because he was, he was upset about, you know, what they had him doing and him doing the job. He was really upset, and we're like, Barry, just come with us to dinner because, you know, we'll have a good time. It's a hibachi steakhouse. We'll have fun. He's like, oh, I don't know. Those places are kind of expensive. We're like, come on, just come. So we get there, and we're, you know, we're ordering, and, and uh, you know, when you get a hibachi steakhouse, you order, it, it's like, a, it's like a, a package thing. You just say you want the beef, and it comes with, you know, the onions and the mushrooms and the, the shrimp and the, you know, sprouts and everything like that. It's just all included, you know, 18 bucks and whatever you want. Well, he's looking, and he's like, oh, my God, this is so expensive. He actually had the balls to ask the waitress, would it be cheaper if I didn't get the sprouts? So he wanted, like, a dollar taken off his bill if he didn't get the alfalfa sprouts in his meal. We were like, you got to be kidding me. So, you know, he, he would kind of bum things out because he was so cheap. Now, he's a hell of a guy, real nice guy, but because he was so cheap, you couldn't, you, you could never enjoy yourself. You know, he never wanted to do anything. But, uh, did Chris have a problem with uh, uh, losing to him? No, not at all. Yeah. I mean, if, he, if you ever met Chris, I mean, he, he always likened himself to Doug Summers. He was the guy that was there to get people over and make them look good. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's a job, so guess what? you got to do the job in right. your job once in a while. It's part of the job. So, I mean, no, he, was, he never cared. I mean, that was, a lot of times that was his job was getting people over and making them look good. So, and, you, and he understood that. There's a lot of guys in this business that don't understand that when you do the job, it doesn't mean you suck. Mm-hmm. It means you know there's a reason that the other guy has to win, you know. And Chris always understood his place. You know, he he never questioned that at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you have anything else, caller? Yeah. What is your relationship with Missy Hyatt right now? There is no relationship. Put it that way. <laughs> Why would you ask that? I'm just curious. No, there there is no relationship. I don't talk to her. We're not friends. Um, you know, we're acquaintances. Put it that way. Uh, thanks for calling in. 
All right. Uh, Jimmy, anything from the board? I wonder if that was her boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Because I haven't, I haven't called her in like forever, and every time she calls or leaves a message or texts me, I don't answer her back. I wonder if that was her boyfriend. Because mm. I said, "Why would you ask that?" and he didn't answer. Yeah, he just said, uh, "He said it was, hmm. he was curious." God, and why would you ask that out of the blue? Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of that's bizarre. a little weird. Yeah, yeah. it's probably her boyfriend. Oh well. <laughs> Uh, if WWE ever came to you and asked, asked you to be in the Hall of Fame, would you be a part of it? Absolutely. Absolutely. I um, I talked to somebody from their office like about a year and a half ago, and he actually brought the idea up. He's like, you know, eventually you're going to get in there. I'm like, cool, when? He goes, I don't know when. Mm-hmm. Hold on a second. Yep. Uh, it's just my boyfriend calling. I'll text him and say I'm still on the phone. We can let you go here in a couple minutes if you want. Oh, let me just... Um, and uh, let them know I'm still doing this. Right. But anyway, um, no, it, it would be awesome, I think, uh, to do that. I mean, to, on, to be honored in the group of people that, you know, are there. But I wouldn't want it to be anytime soon because, and you think about it, the people that are in that, right. they're 60 years old. Right. You know what I mean? They are classics and legends. And, you know, I'm, I'm only 34, and I'm not done yet. So I don't want to, you know, I, I hate to be in the same category as, like, the old guys because I'm not one of the old guys yet. Right. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I've been in this business forever, but I started really young. You know, so, I don't know, in a, in a few years, but not just yet, you know, mm-hmm. not have just they, yet. Have they put out a, a new figure every recently in the uh, Legends line or anything like that? Yeah, I've got one, the classic uh, Superstars line coming out. Um, it's, it's coming out in, the, in Series 17, and I think they're on 13 or 14 right now, and mine's going to be out on uh, in the 17th Series. So, mm-hmm. soon, I mean, I, already, I signed the contract over a year ago, you know, got all that done with and they just you know have yet to come out with us right so, I one of our uh, regular callers uh he collects those figures and he um he quite enjoys the female ones i'm sorry what's what? up with him uh just uh one, one of our regular callers he calls in quite often about the uh, action figures okay uh, and he really enjoys the uh the female ones oh god how does he enjoy it uh, i don't think or do we, i not want to know i don't think we want to know <laughs> Don't Can I just tell you how many people, when my first doll came out, if you remember my very first doll, it was the Bendy doll. Right. I don't want to know what people were doing with the legs on that doll. <laughs> I really don't want to know. Wrapping them around the finger. Oh, Jesus. But, uh, yeah, I don't want to know what people are doing with dolls. I really don't. I mean, buy them, I'll sign them, and do what you want, <laughs> but don't let me know about it. I used to have that figure. Which one, the Bendy? Yeah. Wait, wait what do you mean, used to? I actually still have all my uh, figures, uh, all my old uh, t- wrestling action figures. You should still have them. Yeah. Maybe I'll put them on eBay. Oh, Jesus. You know, I still have all the old, remember the old, old rubber figures that came out with in the like, early uh, yeah. 80s? I still have all those in my mom's basement somewhere. Yeah. Oh, I can sell them on eBay because mine are still in the package. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was the kind of kid that, you know, I never opened anything, mm-hmm. you know? They're still all packaged. They're probably worth something by now. Right. Well, to show what what, co- what a kind of a cool guy I am, I've got uh, I've got unopened wrestling figures uh, on my uh, bedroom wall. Oh my god. Just, you know. How old are you? Uh, thirty one. Thirty one, and you have unopened wrestling figures hanging on your bedroom wall. Yeah. It's been, Babe, you need a hobby or a girlfriend, one or the other. <laughs> maybe your maybe the girlfriend should be your hobby, but. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I need that when I've got the bendy sunny face? Oh, my God. I don't even want to hear it. La, 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 la. I don't want uh, to hear it. Did you have anything else from the board there, Incher? Uh, let's see. Uh, B-R-I-G, he wants to know, what was it like working for XPW? Uh, well, besides sustaining two herniated discs in my lower back from being put through a table by Vic Grimes, uh, great. <laughs> no, it was, it was all right. It was cool. Nice people. Um, they really didn't know what they were doing as far as, you know, doing a wrestling show. Because uh, a lot of the people, I would say 60% of the people they had on the show, like the people from L.A., were just porn people, and they wanted to wrestle. So it was kind of, you know, hand in hand. They they did wrestled on the weekends, did porn during the week. It was, you know, a little bit weird. And you need, even the guys who weren't on the videos, they worked in their studios or in their warehouse, like, you know, production or distribution of their videos so it was all like intertwined mm-hmm. uh, it, was, it was great too when you know I did my first show and Rob laughed oh do you want to make some extra money I was like oh that's okay <laughs> I'd rather be broke <laughs> <laughs> my very first show you know I find, he brings me in and I meet him he's like hey if you want to make some extra money I'm like no dude don't even think about it <laughs> but uh, uh 
but I mean, it, it was nice. I mean, there were there were some nice people, but uh, I mean, a lot of wackos too, a lot of weirdos. But you know, to me, work is work. You know, I don't really care. Uh, P H U. He wants to know what was Todd Pettengill like. Todd was really cool to work with. He was he was a professional. He was he was fun. Like we did we uh, you know when we co-hosted the show together, we had a lot of fun. When we did the Elmo sex tape, you remember the sunny sex tape with Elmo? <laughs> yeah. I mean he, that was him in the suit. That was a blast. We had a good time doing that. But uh, he was just very professional. I, mean, I don't think he liked working with me as much as you know I thought he did. Because I mean if you think about it, the show that we did together, that we hosted together, was just his show. Then they stick me with him, so it kind of took a little bit of his fire away from him. But you know. I mean, I haven't spoken to him since, but, you know, if I ever bumped into him, I'm sure he'd be, you know, cordial. But he was a cool guy. Uh, one of the fans want to know, what did, you, what did you think of the Cloudy character? Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> I think that ranks right up there with Mantar. Right. I mean, come on, it's just, it's stupid. I mean, how can they, you know, actually, and they were actually serious about thinking, oh, this is going to be great, you know, we're going to have a guy dressed like you. I'm like, you got to be kidding. You actually think this is going to work? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it worked for a whole, what, 27 days? But that was it. I, I just, it was a waste of time. It really was. Mm -hmm. uh, someone wants to know here in the chat room, Santo, what did you think of uh, Don Marie being known as uh, Tammy Lynn Bitch? Well, Dawn's one of my best friends. Mm -hmm. I mean, so I, I've always been supportive in everything she's ever done. You know, even, even if it's, even if I see, you know, I've seen her do things that I necessarily would not have done, but I'm so always supportive of her because, like I said, she is one of my best friends. Anything she does is great by me, and I'm there for her. When we did that whole angle, it was great. I mean, it got her a lot of heat. I mean, it gave me something to do there, and we had a lot of fun together. I mean, we loved getting in the ring and rolling around together, and even though it always ended with me stripping her you know, in some way, shape, or form, um, it was great. And I mean, because we worked so much together, you know, that's how our friendship grew, and we didn't know each other before that. He just brought her in, gave her the gimmick, and we started working together, and thank, you know, thank God, that's one thing I do thank Paul Heyman for was doing that, because I gained an incredible friend, and we're still, you know, super great friends to this day. I just saw her a couple weeks ago. You know, I go to her house and visit her and her baby every so often. We talk at least once a week, and she, she's awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, just want to let everybody know, uh, this Saturday, June 8th, uh, June 16th, the Crazy 8 uh, for Pro Wrestling Plug. You can go to ProWrestlingPlugman.com, and um, you got the big um, tailgate party before the show, which we're going to be part of, along with the Nasty Boys. And, uh, yeah, I'm actually I'm actually managing the one and only fabulous, you know, no one can compare, um, Helter Skelter. <laughs> okay. And his partner against the Nasty Boys, so that'll be pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Have you ever, um, when you do see some of these uh, indie guys, do you see any tag yeah. teams you'd like to, uh, you'd like to manage? Uh... <laughs> or, 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 <laughs> We'll take that as to me, a, as to a, me, it's all the same. You know, okay. <laughs> I mean, if they want to book me to manage them, guess what? I'll do it. But it's not like I still so go to, hey, Johnny, listen, I've got this great idea. I want to manage this team. I know. It doesn't work like that. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, helper skill. <laughs> uh, thanks for coming on. Hey, we'll anytime. All right. Anytime, and hopefully I'll see you guys on Saturday. Okay. All right. Take, take care, everybody. Stay cool. Yeah. And you're it. One line. Dot com. That's the important stuff. Now, the most important thing is you're listening to Jake the Snake Roberts. Don't you ever forget that, or you just never know what might show up.